So what I wanted to do was start with a couple machines that we had designed in our last video and show how we can design some variants or, or change these machines ever so slightly to uh, handle uh, different uh, uh, types of languages. So the first one that I had in my, my example was what if we had changed this uh, ends with a, a, a one to ends with a zero. What would we need to do to this machine to make it uh, 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 detect this one. There's actually two possible ideas that you might have in your mind. One might be maybe we just switch the accept and reject states here. Okay, um, and let's think for a second. <clears throat> is this true? Okay, so we had two languages here. Um, language one, and maybe I'll just call this one language zero for a second, the one we started out with, was all strings w such that w ends with uh, a one. And the question is, are these two complement languages of each other? Now, we haven't really defined what a complement language is yet, but I'm going to make it uh, a, a quick definition for you right now, which is um, a complement language is a language where um, every string that was in the original language is not in the complement language and vice versa. So everyone that was not in the original language is in uh, the complement language. So there's this sense where we said, hey, look, a string can either end with a zero or it can end with a one. Is it possible that it could end with both? I think hopefully we can all see that's, that's the contradiction. There's no way you could end with a zero and end with a one. So there's a sense that, that you can't do that. But there's actually a very important extra question there that we should consider. Is it possible that you could be neither? That you can be a string that doesn't end with a zero and also be a string that doesn't end with a one? And at first you might think that's impossible. You have to end with either of those. Well, unless you're this very special string. Remember the empty string has no characters in it at all. That string does not end with a one and it does not end with a zero. So that string, epsilon, should be not in this language and not in this language. So because one string, we found at least one string that's not in both of these languages, it turns out these are not complements of each other. They are very close to being complements of each other, except for this one string. This one string is in both languages, and so they are not complements. What that means is we cannot just swap our accept and reject states here. Because if we accept this one, if we make this one an accept state, let's just do what I'm talking about here. Okay, in this case, if we accept here, we will accept the epsilon. Okay, but we shouldn't be. I, actually, I was saying epsilon was in both of these languages. That's in fact not in both of these languages. So what we should be doing is rejecting it, but this would cause us to accept. So we can't make that change. That change is not going to be sufficient to fix our machine. In fact, though, we can make a very simple change like that. We can change our, our ones to zeros and we can change our zeros to ones and we will have now changed our machine into a machine that accepts our new language. Okay, so just a, a demonstration of how, how we can modify a machine that we've already designed for a language to get to a variant machine for a variant language. So let's take a look at this other one that we designed last time. Um, has at least three ones. And let's see of some variants that we can uh, uh, change this to. So one of those I want to change is instead of at least three ones, let's do at most three one. Okay, so what do we need to do here? There is a sense again that these are kind of complement languages. All right. Uh, they're not complement languages, but we can use that idea to maybe get us going. So let's start by saying, well, what, what happens if we actually switch the accept and reject states in this particular machine? Okay, so all I've done is change the accepting state to a reject state and, uh, and the uh, rejecting states to being accepting states. So now let's notice a few things. This will accept the epsilon. That's good. Does it have at most three ones? Yes. Okay. Uh, it'll accept strings with one one. It'll accept strings with two ones. It won't accept strings with three ones, though. One, one, one. So even though this says at most three ones, I think that the, the actual 
uh, language that we've designed here when we swapped it is, is at most two ones. Okay, that's how, what we've kind of ended up with here. So we're off by one, we've got an off by one error, and I'm gonna show you why that is, okay? Uh, before we were saying our length, let's say we had a length here, L. Uh, actually, it's not the length we're interested in, it's the number of ones. So let's say the number of ones we have here is, the, the first one said at least uh, uh, three. So that means the number of ones we have has to be greater than or equal to three. Now, if we take the complement of this logically, if we say the number of ones, let's, let's put this number of ones has to be greater than or equal to three, what is the opposite of that? Well, the opposite is the number of ones. It's not that they're less than or equal to three. When we take the complement of greater than or equal to, we don't get less than or equal to, we get less than. We get ones are less than three, okay? Because in this case, we're counting the equal to three case. This one, we can't be counting the equal to three case if this is our complement. Okay, so if this is our complement, and that's what we saw here. We built the complement machine by swapping the accept and reject states. I haven't emphasized this explicitly yet, so I'm going to do it now. If you have a machine, uh, a deterministic finite automata, and you want it to... Uh, accept exactly those strings that are not in the language, so swap it to accept the ones that it used to reject, you just need to change the accept and reject states. That will ensure that everything that you accepted before is now rejected, and everything that you rejected before is now accepted, and so you're now doing the complement language. So our, our instinct was let's swap them, maybe that'll get us to the complement language, but our complement language wasn't exactly what we wanted. We wanted the number of ones to be less than or equal to three, that's what it means to be at most three. So we need to build the equal bit back in there somehow. And the way we're gonna do that, let's see if I can do this, um, is we need to move this state uh, over and make room for uh, another state on the, on the inside there. So what's our other state gonna be? It's gonna be like these ones. We've got a state so far, we could call this zero ones, one one, two ones, we now have one for three ones. We also needed one for four ones, let's see why. We can make this a similar state, add another one in there, and now what we've got is one one, two ones, three ones. Okay, so if I have three ones, at most three ones, I'm still accepting, but once I get that fourth one, I move into that limbo state that I mentioned last time, a dead end state, you can't escape out of it, because on all transitions, you're remaining in that state. And then also it's a rejecting state. So no matter what we do here, after you get there, you're trapped, you're gonna reject, okay? So what we've done here is we've changed this to has at most three ones. Okay, now I'm going to change this one last time. What happens if we change it to exactly three ones? Not less than or equal to, not greater than or equal to, but exactly equal to. Well, we've already got the setup here in our machine as well. We've got states for zero ones, one one, two one, three ones, four ones. So which is the one we're looking one for? The one that has exactly three ones. Which state is that? That's this one we labeled three. So let's see if we can fix our machine. We don't want to accept if there's two or one or zero. Let's put that two state back in there. Then so one one or zero ones no one ones no two ones no three ones yes get a fourth one too many ones we're into the limbo state and we're done okay so we've got here uh, so what have we done we've done a couple variant machines okay I want to go back to this first one maybe and I want to I want to take a look at a, another variant machine I'm gonna have to draw a new one because this one's gonna be a little bit too hard to work with but I want to now think about the the uh, language, all the strings w that starts and ends with a zero. So first of all, our initial state. Um, I've been hinting at this, but let's let's start talking about this now. When we have a string, the epsilon. We always want to say, is that in our language or not? Because if it's in our language, then our start state has to be an accepting state. If it's not in our language, then our start state cannot be an accepting state. So uh, again, the language is all strings W that start and end with a zero, okay? Um, and so 
Again, epsilon doesn't start or end with a zero. It should not be accepted, so we probably should not have an accept state there. Okay. Now, if we get a zero here, we're on, we're off to the races. We're good. But if we get a one, if the first symbol that we get is a one, then we know that we should not accept because we did not start with a zero. So this is an example of that. Hey, we've already got information that tells us this is not a string we're looking for. So where do we go? We go to a dead end state, a limbo state, and we stay there and it's a reject state. Once we start with a one, we should not go anywhere else. We're rejecting. But if we get that zero, we don't know if we should, if we should end yet. Okay. Well, let's, let's be clear. If I only got a zero, does this string start and end with a zero? I think the answer is yes. It's a little weird. There's not two zeros in there. It's the same zero that it starts with and ends with, but the answer is yes. So I think that tells me this state needs to be an accepting state because if I get exactly one zero, I better be accepting. Okay. Now what? Let's go back up here and think because we already had a machine that had to deal with ending with a zero. Okay, this is ending with a zero. So now we kind of want to borrow this machine and, and take it down below here. Okay, although what we'll see is the machine's kind of backwards. We've already got this state here. We've got the state for ending with a zero, right? We've got our zero. We've hit here. We're ending with a zero. Now, what were we detecting up above there? Well, as long as we keep getting zeros, we should stay there because maybe that's the last symbol. Maybe that's the last symbol. Maybe that's the last symbol. But if we ever get a one, we say, no, if that's the last symbol, even though we started with a zero over here, we now are ending with a one. So that should not accept. And as long as we keep getting ones, we should stay over there. But maybe we got a big long string of ones and then we got a zero and that zero brings us back to the accepting state. So this is a machine that helps us detect if we've started and ended with a zero, keeping in mind, we needed this special limbo state here to detect when we started with a one and just cut off all those transitions. All right, let's do another one here where we have this uh, language containing a substring. We did a substring one last time, and I'm gonna give you kind of a guideline on how I do these substring ones, okay? I always start out by just writing the substring down in a series of states like this. So I got my substring wrong already, so let me make sure I get this right. Um, we're going to start one, we're going to get zero, we're going to get another one, we're going to get a zero, and then we're going to get a one. And if I get there, I should accept because I've seen my string. Okay. Now, remember last time what we want to do is we want to think okay what should we do in these cases if we don't get the symbol that we're looking for so at the beginning of the string until we see our first one if we get zeros they don't help us so we're not going to do anything we're just going to wait 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 until we see our first one once we see the one that might be the beginning of the substring that we're looking for so we need to be careful we need to move down our path we've seen the one but if we see another one we know the last one we saw wasn't the one we were looking for, but this new one that we, we did see, that might be the one we're looking for. So as long as we keep seeing ones, we may, are you the beginning of our substring? Are you be the, the beginning of our substring? And then if we get the zero, after we finally, you know, we've got as many ones as we can, we now see the zero, we start seeing, hey, this substring is the way that I expect, okay? The problem is now, if I got a one, a zero, and then I get another zero, I, I started out going down the path and I thought I was getting what I wanted, but then I got something I didn't expect. So now I've got one zero zero. One zero zero isn't going to help me make my uh, substring at all. That means I need to get all the way back to the beginning. Okay, ready to see that first one again. Okay, now let's imagine we saw one zero one. We got one zero and one. We're all the way up to here. Okay, we got one zero one, and now we're going to see another one. Well, 1011 doesn't help us with anything. 1011 isn't the beginning of our string. However, that last one, the 1011, if we've been tracking 1011, we know this part doesn't help us. 
but this could be the beginning of our new string, right? It could be the substring. So instead of going all the way back to the beginning like we did with our zero, let's just go back to that first one state and say, ah, I've got one one, maybe that's the beginning of my substring. Okay, we keep going. So now I've got one zero one and another zero. So we've got one zero one zero. If we see another one, we're good. We know that's what we're looking for. So if we see another zero though, we're in trouble because that's not the substring that we're looking for. And we need to get all the way back to the beginning and start thinking about finding that first one again. So I'm gonna make another little transition here that says go all the way back to the beginning if you get your zero. Okay. So again, we can go back and verify. Let's verify for each one. Do I have a zero and one leaving each state? Zero, one, yes, okay. Zero, one, yes, okay. Zero, one, yes, all right. Zero, one, yes, okay. Zero, one, yes, okay. Zero, one, all my states have zero ones. That means this is a de complete deterministic finite automata. We have all the transitions in there that we need, okay. And um, as long as we've designed this properly, we should be able to detect every string that has a one, zero, one, zero, one in it. Now here's the last bit that I wanna show you. What happens if we change this to does not contain one zero one zero one? Now, I mentioned this already when we were looking at some of our examples that when I change it to does not contain, this is a true complement language. We've changed it from does to does not. We've changed it to the complement language and if you want to decide the complement language or accept the complement language or recognize the complement language, you just need to swap the accept and reject states in your DFA, okay, in your deterministic finite automata. So now we've got a string, or now we've got a machine that will accept any uh, input strings that don't have this substring. Now let's make sure this is true because if it does have the substring, one zero one zero one then we will follow this path until we hit this last state and we'll get stuck there and we will reject so we know that if you do contain this substring we are going to reject you uh, every time so this shows us again just a few extra examples of designing dfas helps us explore their power helps us see how we can take one dfa and maybe transition it into a different one that uh, uh, recognizes a language that is very similar a variant language maybe to one that we've already looked at so hopefully this has helped to build up your intuition on building dfas thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in that next video